Here's Mary Garofalo. Good evening and welcome to 16 by 9, The Bigger Picture. You can't see it, you can't taste it, but some are calling it a serious health threat every parent should know about. Wi-Fi, wireless internet, is in schools coast to coast, but why do some kids say Wi-Fi is making them sick? In a 16 by 9 investigation, we put Wi-Fi to the test. Here's our Carolyn Jarvis. They are gathering by the hundreds, hacking a public forum in Toronto, filling a school board meeting in Peterborough. I don't know what I'm going to do. If you, if you have Wi-Fi in there, I just, I can't, I can't do this to my daughter. I cannot put her through this experiment. And assembling at a church in Vancouver, a fever pitch building over what they see as a threat invisible to the eye. Society in general uh, doesn't want to lose a convenience at the expense of safety. They're talking about radiation exposure from Wi-Fi or wireless internet, and they're concerned it's making their kids sick. I just think that we don't know, so why risk it? Today, schools across the country are rushing to install it, but these students say the convenience isn't worth the risk. I had heart racing, headaches, nauseous. It's a really weird feeling. Weak, and I'm really shaky. And when they're not at school? Does it happen on the weekends? No. There's no rhyme or reason to the symptoms. They range from headaches to nausea, heart palpitations, even rashes. So 16 by 9 wanted to find out exactly what, if any, threat exists in schools. So we went with this man, industry tester Kavinder Dillon, to measure the radiation levels in a typical wireless classroom. Is it fair to say that this would give us an average sample size of what we'd be seeing in a typical classroom? Um, yes, we're going to be concentrating on this area. So this will basically be, give us what the proportional rate is. To simulate an actual classroom, we set up each computer to stream video, constantly receiving information. From the devices that are being uh, set up right now, and we got our antennas uh, hooked up, and we're getting the real-life signals with the correction factors from the antennas and the cable losses. Right now, we are basically uh, 113.8 microwatts. So, in effect, according to Health Canada, this classroom would be deemed safe. Um, according to the criteria, yes. So next, we go out into the hallway to check the router, one of several in the school fixed to the ceiling. The levels here hit 2,600 microwatts, 20 times the reading inside the classroom. People who are actually in industry who are testing this, they, they, f they feel this is a high limit. This is, this is very high. Really? Yeah. You heard them. Our industry tester calls that level high but it's still well within Canada's safety guideline. Now that guideline is a thing called Safety Code 6. It sets the limit for radio frequency radiation exposure and Health Canada says there's no way the levels we found are causing those headaches and heart palpitations. And Beth Peterson of Health Canada says the science backs it up. There's no evidence, scientific evidence, that those kind of effects are caused by the energy um, limits that kids are exposed to by Wi-Fi. Health Canada sets the limit at 10 million microwatts per meter squared. Now, that might not mean much to most of us, but in 2008, Toronto's Board of Health said it's way too high and asked Canada's Minister of Health in this letter for much stricter regulations, 100 times more strict. Health Canada never changed a thing. Still, no matter what any guideline says, these parents say they've seen it for themselves and Wi-Fi is harming their kids. So she had to hold on to friends in order not to collapse on the floor. She had headaches, and we're not talking just regular headaches. They were extreme headaches where the secretary would call me, I'd have to come pick her up. According to this doctor, there's good reason to believe these kids are telling the truth and not just making up some excuse to skip school. There is no question in my mind it exists. Dr. Jennifer Armstrong specializes in environmental medicine. The big thing with kids is they're more vulnerable. Why? Children are more vulnerable, their skulls are thinner. Their, their bodies are not um, as strong as ours in, in general. They're developing, their brains are developing. So you expose children to radiation and their little bodies don't handle it as well. And cardiologist Dr. Stephen Sinatra agrees. As a parent, if I had a young child, would I want to use my child as an experiment to see if it's going to take 30 years or 20 years or 10 years to become sick? No, not me. But, and the thing is, we have to sacrifice accelerated education and convenience. And basically, we have to look at the safety of our children. 
We have to do it as a society. Well, 16 by 9 wanted to test the power of Wi-Fi, so we went to visit environmental scientist Magda Havis from Trent University to do another test. Professor Havis's subject, Martin, who calls himself electrically sensitive, is hooked up to a heart monitor, and Havis sets up a wireless computer. Well, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking Martin and exposing him to microwave radiation from Wi-Fi, the same type of thing that we have in schools, for example, and just monitoring his heart to see if his heart reacts to any of the radiation. He won't know when things are turned on or off, so it's going to be a blind study in that regard. With the Wi-Fi plugged in, Martin's heart rate accelerates in mere moments. Now I can feel something. It's going through my chest. I feel it down in my legs, too. The closer the router is, the greater is reaction. Um, a few seconds ago, it was like my chest was actually jumping in the middle here. Then, seconds after the wireless internet is unplugged, just like that, his heart rate slows down. Martin, how are you feeling right now? Fine, I don't think there's anything on. But listen to this. Those levels Martin was exposed to, well, they're acceptable, according to Safety Code 6. So if they're safe, why was his heart racing? Magda Havis has a theory. So some percentage of the population is reacting to these microwave uh, radiation at levels well below Safety Code 6. But I'm not sick from Wi-Fi, and I use it all the time. Well, not everyone has the same sensitivities. We have children who have peanut allergies. We have uh, people who are allergic to uh, pollen. They react to pollen. And it's same with electrical sensitivity. Only uh, a percentage of the population react. Still, Health Canada insists it's done its homework, looked at every bit of science, and that level of radiation won't hurt anybody. Our safety limits are set on, we use a weight of evidence approach. So there are thousands of articles, thousands of peer-reviewed scientific articles on the issue. 16 by 9 wanted to take a look at that evidence, so we asked Health Canada for its science. They sent us this, a list of 16 studies entitled Specific to Wi-Fi. So we did our own homework going through every study, and not a single one looks at whether Wi-Fi in schools poses a health risk to students. Ava says since Health Canada isn't controlling Wi-Fi, parents are going to have to. So are you suggesting that parents should tell their kids, a 13-year-old, a 14-year-old, who may be attached to his laptop or his iPad, you should stop using that? It may not go over so well, but you know, when children want to smoke, and if you're a responsible parent, do you allow your 13-year-old your child to smoke? In my mind, there's no difference between the two. If anything, um, I think maybe microwave radiation is going to show up to be much more harmful than smoking simply because of the amount of exposure that we're, we're seeing in our everyday environment. So how about the people who make these products? We asked to speak to Wi-Fi manufacturers about the possible health effects, but they declined our request for an interview. The organization that represents them, the Wi-Fi Alliance, did, however, provide 16 by 9 with this written statement. Wi-Fi technology meets all national and international safety requirements and emits signals that are typically hundreds to thousands of times below the safety limits. All well and good, but back in the schoolyard, these kids may have reason to wonder if it's safe to go to school. What do you want done? For them to turn it off. Do you feel like there's anything you can do? No. I'm pretty sure they won't listen to us kids. As some schools in Canada race to install Wi-Fi, there are other schools that are concerned about reports of headaches, hyperactivity, and increased heart rates in children. Should we be concerned about wireless technology? And what exactly does it emit? Here again is our Carolyn Jarvis. <laughs> Across the country, these parents, teachers and experts are saying the same thing. There are children getting sick and I don't think it's worth the risk. I really hate sending her to school given the environment that she's in. Wi-Fi is toxic. It's a different form of toxicity, but it's toxic to our bodies. He would often complain of heart palpitations or chest pains. It start getting headaches, foggy vision and like just all weirded out. To expose my kids knowingly is very frightening for me. For me as a parent, I find it incredibly frustrating and scary and sad that no one's even listening to the concerns of the parents. Their concern? That radiation from wireless computers and this little contraption mounted in the hallways and classrooms of schools can make students sick. It's Wi-Fi. Health Canada says there's no risk from the radiation it emits. That's just simply not true. That's simply not true. Dr. David Carpenter is a world-renowned expert in environmental toxins in Albany, New York. 
And he says the Canadian government is just plain wrong. What we do is look at the weight of the evidence. But that's what they said they did. They didn't. The weight of the evidence demonstrates clearly that exposure to radio frequency radiation, the causes disease. The evidence is strongest for cancer. Cancer caused by Wi-Fi emissions certainly doesn't add up with Health Canada's insistence that Wi-Fi is safe. So you're saying that their science is faulty or their analysis of the science is faulty? Their science is faulty and certainly their analysis is faulty. You can selectively look at, at literature, but there's been evidence for harmful effects of microwave radio frequency radiation for 30 or 40 years. Why choose to ignore that? How does that possibly benefit them? When you acknowledge you have a problem and you're a government agency, you have to do something about it. Canada's government might not be doing anything about concerns, but in France, the town of Aéroville St. Clair is. It's the first municipality in the world to remove Wi-Fi from schools and public buildings. Mayor Rodolphe Thomas says he's taking a precautionary approach because he's not willing to gamble with the health of children here. So this town that 10 years ago went wireless ahead of everyone else became in April of 2009 the first to shut it down. Wi-Fi is an important tool, he says, but there are places it simply shouldn't be, like schools. So now, all but two schools here are Wi-Fi free, and the town plans to strip Wi-Fi from all its public buildings by the end of the year. <laughs> but Aéroville St. Clair isn't returning to the dark ages. In fact, it's once again on the cutting edge of technology. It's installed a state-of-the-art fiber optic system that's faster, more stable, and according to the people here, safer. Etienne Sandrier leads an awareness group against wireless technologies. People could see that they were victims, that it was not that innocuous, that some people really suffered from this. So it started a, a real interrogation among the public, and people said that, well, if it's not absolutely necessary, why should we uh, use this thing? And parents around here are applauding the change. She says removing Wi-Fi is a good thing for students. And while other European countries might not be pulling Wi-Fi, they are taking a stand. In 2007, Germany recommended children limit their use of Wi-Fi, uncertain of its long-term effects. And in Britain, a handful of public schools decided independently to remove it. But back in Canada, there's no precautionary approach. Wi-Fi is going up, not coming down, leaving students like Mackenzie Honing with no good option. Go to school and feel sick. It's just kind of weird. It felt like my heart kept skipping beats. Or don't go to school at all. I noticed that every time I like, came home for the weekend, it started to get better, and by Sunday, I'd feel normal. No like headaches or anything like that. Well, this is the petition. Mackenzie's mom, Linda, is fed up waiting for the government to change its mind, so she started her own campaign, hopeful more parents will join her. We don't have 10 years on this issue because the exposure of radiation for the kids is, is harmful. Environmental health expert Dr. Carpenter says it's time we stop turning a blind eye to the risk. When you look at the guidelines that have been put in place by Health Canada, do they go far enough to protecting Canadians? They certainly do not. These guidelines are based on a fallacy. A fallacy that, according to Dr. Carpenter, is putting children at risk. It's appropriate for parents to demand that Wi-Fi not be placed in school. Not because we have proof at this stage that it's harming the children, but because we have absolutely no evidence that it's safe contrary to what any government agency says. And not heeding the warnings of experts like Dr. Carpenter is leaving students like Jeremiah feeling helpless. I really am nervous. I don't really like school no more. Did you used to like school? I used to love it. I'd get mad if I missed a day. Dr. Carpenter warns there may be many missed days or worse for students like Jeremiah if change doesn't come soon. You don't want to wait until you can count the bodies before you tell the public that there is a serious potential of harm. And with regard to the issue of Wi-Fi in schools, this is exactly where we are.